Chapter 1. Insight Help to Detect the AIDS Epidemics At least once in life, everyone has a striking moment of understanding something that wasn't clear before. Maybe during a math class, you suddenly realized how to solve an equation or cracked a riddle after hours of thinking. These revelations are called insights, and they are crucial for our personal and society's breakthroughs. Insights can be quick and sudden as well as slow and are gained through trial and error. The latter happened with Michael Gottlieb, an American MD who identified AIDS, acquired immune deficiency syndrome, as an upcoming epidemic. His path to insight started in 1981 with a pneumonia patient whose immunity wouldn't respond appropriately to the disease. Our body produces helper and suppressor cells to regulate the course of illness. The former switches on the production of antibodies, which are the main fighters against microbes. Suppressor cells control these fighters so that they don't attack good microbes. As a rule, we have more helper cells in our blood when we are ill. So when Gottlieb noticed that his patients had more suppressor cells, he was shocked. On top of that, the patient's body acted against the helper cells, never letting him get better. Dr. Gottlieb noted that this patient had a same-sex orientation, and later he discovered that five other patients who developed pneumonia also were same-sex oriented. Seeing this as more than mere coincidence, he and his colleagues sounded the alarm about the dangerous disease. His ability to recognize a pattern made humanity aware of the risks surrounding people in the past and now. But not only can scientists and geniuses gain insights, all people can. Our brains are built this way. We enjoy the moments when resolution enters our minds. In the philosophical book, The Art of Thought, English psychologist Graham Wallace described the stages of how insight is born. Number one, preparation. A person reaches something through analysis. Number two, incubation. A person ceases conscious attempts to consider the problem and their unconscious takes control. Number three, illumination. An insight breaks into the conscious mind. Number four, verification. An individual checks whether the insight really works. Remember, by noticing patterns that are around us, we can get valuable insights. This summary will ensure your understanding of insights' emergent stages, which is important for getting more of them throughout life. The author explains how to become an insight generator and alter one's mind. You will be able to increase the flow of new ideas and change your personality and the world around you. Chapter 2 Pay attention to coincidences and follow your curiosity. Coincidences are the first signs of recognizing a new pattern, so paying attention to them is wise. Luckily for the astronomical community, Jocelyn Bell Burnell, an Irish astrophysicist, paid attention to coincidences, which allowed her to discover a new type of star. With the help of a radio telescope, she aimed to find quasars, luminous objects that emit energy. Within the data, she detached specific curves that seemed odd, so she put question marks near them. She started to notice them more often and recognize the indications of quasars during her month-long research. The first thing Burnell understood was that the curves represented periodic pulses. She even thought her equipment had broken down, but technicians confirmed everything worked well. She started investigating different parts of the sky, finding the same pulse pattern repeatedly. As it turned out, she had discovered fast-revolving pulsars, or neutron stars. Spotting a coincidence is like a hunter picking up a trail. Dr. Gary Klein Apart from coincidences, curiosity drives people and encourages analysis and research of a particular situation. Scottish microbiologist Alexander Fleming studied Staphylococcus bacteria, which had caused many deaths, by growing these pathogens in petri dishes. He left the dishes without observation or intrusion for a month while on a family vacation. Imagine his surprise upon his return when he found that a developed mold destroyed some parts of the bacteria in one of the dishes. He found it amusing and continued the research. Later, he realized that mold comprised a substance that killed the Staphylococcus germs, and that's how penicillin, the first antibiotic, was discovered. Remember, when a specific situation raises a what-was-that-about question, Keep digging because you're about to get valuable insight. We are prone to build associations because they help us generate new ideas. Humanity would have never achieved such progress if it weren't for our ability to connect the dots and follow coincidences. However, beware of false insights, which by the way make people believe in ridiculous conspiracy theories. So we should always check our ideas to prove that coincidences are just facts we haven't noticed before. Chapter 3 Knowledge, contradiction, and creative desperation pave the way to insights. 
People believed that the Earth was the center of the universe in the Middle Ages, and everything revolved around it. But Polish astronomer Nicholas Copernicus noticed inconsistencies in such a view and offered a heliocentric system. The sun was in the center, and all the planets moved around it. Such revolutionary theory contravened other people's beliefs, and Copernicus struggled with their lack of understanding and desire to accept his work. He had a contradictory insight, a perception that doesn't agree with common knowledge. Contradiction insights tell us that we lie to ourselves, which is something we must change. Unlike curiosity that thrusts our desire to research a question because of pure interest, contradictions raise resistance to new ideas. Some insights are gained due to so-called creative desperation. Example, when a person is stuck with a solution to a problem, and suddenly the epiphany comes. This kind of revelation often happens to chess players when they realize that their strategy doesn't work and come up with an original move that leads to victory. People who don't play chess also receive insights encouraged by creative desperation. Emergencies usually make our brains work in a different, more inventive way. Case in point, Aaron Ralston, an American mountaineer, went hiking in Utah. He slipped and a boulder pinned his arm. He was trapped for more than five days. His first idea was to destroy a part of the boulder using a pocket knife that unfortunately dulled very quickly. Ralston realized that his arm was exposed to necrosis. Blood wasn't circulating through it. There was no sense in freeing his arm. He had to free himself from the trapped limb to escape. When his food and water supplies ran out, he decided to amputate his arm. But since the knife dulled, the task was impossible. In a flood of anger that came from desperation, he suddenly realized that the boulder was his helper at that moment. It held his arm so tightly he could break his bones instead of cutting them. That's what he did. He broke his arm, freed himself, and found help. You can watch a film about his story called 127 Hours or read his book Between a Rock and a Hard Place. Remember, sometimes what we perceive as an enemy is actually a savior. Chapter 4 Insights Born from Careful Observation and Inattentiveness In everyday life, creative desperation is all about facing challenging situations, like in chess, because escaping death is extreme. Let's consider the case of Cheryl Kane, a financial manager. One of her requirements was to collect filled-out time cards from employees every week in case of an unexpected government audit. However, the workers didn't comply with her demand, and no strict rules could help in this situation. So, she came up with a wonderful idea. Every time a person handed over timely filled cards, Kane rewarded them with a Hershey Kiss chocolate. Her plan worked, and people even started warning her if they needed more time to complete their time cards. Keep in mind, for creative desperation, there is no transferring the task to an unconscious part of the mind. An idea is born in a conscious state straight away. Some insights are born from inattentiveness, when we don't connect the dots consciously, but they are already connected in our heads unconsciously. Once, Klein took his daughters on a vacation to New York. An important point in this story is that the author usually puts his car keys into his briefcase. He took his baggage from the car, left his car in the Dayton Airport in Ohio, and then flew to New York with his children. They were to fly home from New York, but one of the children developed an ear infection and so could not endure pressure drops inherent to flights. So the family took a train to Toledo, Ohio, and Klein's mother-in-law, Bessie, who happened to be in that area, gave them a ride to Dayton Airport to get their car. Bessie also planned to visit them at home, and they decided to meet there later. When they arrived at the airport, Klein thought he didn't need to take his baggage with him in his car because it would arrive at home with Bessie. When he approached his car, he remembered that the keys were in his luggage in Bessie's car, who had already left the airport. Klein realized that people frequently didn't think of specific ideas as insights, considering they just had a good memory. In such cases, inattentiveness leads to obvious insights, like the fact that the keys are in a different car, and he knew about it unconsciously. Did you know, an American behavioral psychologist, Burhas Skinner, offered a concept of positive reinforcement. When a person provides stimuli after specific behavior to encourage this conduct in the future, that's what Cheryl Kane did. Chapter 5. The Most Common Ways to Get More Insights now that we have considered different ways of birthing insights, the author provides tips on how to get more epiphanies. First, you should question yourself and the people who came up with interesting ideas. Interviewing helps to understand which strategy you or another person followed to receive insight. You will be able to generate more ideas with the help of the right questions. Second, if you need insight about a specific category of people, 
Useful for marketing specialists, always be respectful of their way of thinking, even if it seems too simple to you. A human brain frequently doesn't follow the pattern that may look the most logical or easy. There can be many pitfalls, so don't neglect the complexity of a person's choices, decisions, and intelligence. Klein's grandson's parents made an honest mistake concerning their son, Kobe. He was only one year old, and they assumed that he wouldn't understand where his dad was if asked. However, they decided to challenge Kobe and did the following. Kobe's mom pointed at her nose and specified that it was hers. Then she pointed at her son's nose and identified it as his. Then she asked where his dad's nose was. To their surprise, Kobe pointed at his father's nose and grabbed it. Supposing a person isn't capable of something without even checking can cause you to lose lots of insightful information. If you don't expect much, if you don't inquire in a way that respects the intelligence of the other person, you probably won't find many insights. Dr. Gary Klein If you want to get an insight into someone's behavior, you should consider a person's knowledge, mindset, and experience, priorities and drivers, and limitations. As for the knowledge, you should determine whether one knew something unique or, on the contrary, had a knowledge gap in some common subject. Then you need to find out which beliefs and peculiarities of personal background an individual relied on, which led to specific results. Next, realize what motivated a person to behave in a certain way and which limitations didn't allow them to act otherwise. Remember, before jumping to conclusions, collect more information about a person to understand why they behaved in a specific manner. Chapter 6. Insights Change Our Personalities and Paths Insights change us and our courses of life altogether. One day you believe that the earth is the center of the universe, and another day your mindset alters and makes you perceive the world as it is, complex, full of mysteries, and definitely not with humans as its core. Insights transform more than one part of our perception of reality. We change our priorities, realize more about our skills, and find a new, more suitable life path. We are the same, but still very different after receiving epiphanies. Of course, you will have invalid insights that cannot be supported by facts. But it doesn't mean that you must abandon the whole process of getting great ideas about something just because from time to time you'll be wrong. Don't be afraid of making mistakes because they provide an understanding of which way of living fits us best. Except for providing useful mind and world-changing information, insights save us from the limits we set in. Society has been quite disapproving of mistakes for the known part of human development. People strive to avoid mistakes by all means necessary to preserve perfection, but aiming for perfection can be detrimental to our creativity and adequate perception of reality. Insights allow us to break through our prejudices, stereotypes, and automatic thinking, giving birth to an extraordinary mindset. The author compares insights with magic because we don't usually fully realize how we get to some brilliant ideas, and it seems like some unearthly processes in our heads bring us there. Luckily, our brains are tuned into receiving insights, and for this reason, we cannot connect the dots, research questions with contradictory natures, and find errors around us. With these habits, people wouldn't have been able to make discoveries. That magic lives inside us, stirring restlessly. Dr. Gary Klein People realized the importance of insights a long time ago. In ancient Greece, they worshipped divine spirits responsible for human creativity. Plato and Socrates, Greek philosophers, honored such muses too by coming to their templates to ask for inspiration. You don't need to appeal to goddesses of creativity to get inspired. Your brain will help you if you don't resist the process of insight birth. Conclusion The good news is that not only geniuses and scientists have insights, but ordinary people do too. Probably the most exciting way of getting them is through curiosity since it's always fun to notice something unique in the ordinary. The nature of insights still retains something magical due to their discrete transition from the unconscious to the conscious mind. However, the key to getting them is to notice specific patterns by collecting more information about the world. So, the first thing you should do to become a more insightful person is to develop a desire to learn. Research the topics that seem interesting, even if your questions include why bananas are yellow and what the etymology of Saved by the Bell is. It's creepy, by the way. Next, learn to ask many questions to yourself and other people. When something happens and you feel like your attention sticks to a specific situation, interview yourself about why your brain chooses to focus on it. This helps to get plenty of insights about yourself, which are essential for understanding how to live your life.
For instance, if you suddenly felt sad, instead of neglecting the feeling or trying to silence it through the music, alcohol, films, or whatever you do to run away from bad thoughts, concentrate on it and ask yourself a bunch of questions to get to the root. And don't forget to validate your insights before you build up your confidence that something is right like Fleming, Gottlieb, and Bernal did with their research questions. Try this. Number one, track the emergence of your insights. What was the trigger? Which questions did you have to ask to develop a new idea? Did you build any associations to get insight? Number two, try to be a more active listener since it helps to understand how others get insights. Number three, don't underestimate other people's power, like Obi-Wan Kenobi underestimated the power of Anakin Skywalker, and check a person's knowledge before jumping to conclusions.